What's happening everyone, Nick here from TV Box Top with another new and exciting TV Box review. On today's video, we have another release from the Yugus line, and this is their latest release running on the Amblogic S905X4 chipset. This is the Yugus X4Q Pro, and this is their 4GB, 32GB model. There is the X4Q Cube, which is their 2GB, 16GB model, and there is the X4Q Plus, which is their 4GB, 64GB model. Yugus produces the best Android boxes in the industry, and they are considered the gold standard when it comes to quality and features. So to see what makes them so great, stick around, my full review is up next. And welcome back. In your purchase, you get the X4Q Pro itself. One Bluetooth Air Mouse with Voice Commands feature. One HDMI cable. A 5 volts 2.5 amps DC power adapter. And a user manual. Its design is an evolved version of the previous X3 model, which was intended to function as a large dongle. However, in this model, they dropped the dongle format and went with a full TV box design, while at the same time preserving some of the features of the X3. To the top, you have the Yugo's X4Q branding, and you have an LED power and activity indicator, a feature adopted from its previous version. For input-output peripherals, it has one HDMI 2.0 port, one Ethernet Gigabit LAN port, one USB 2.0 port, and a USB Type-C power delivery port. This Type-C power delivery port is another one of the features from its previous model. To its side, it has one USB 3.0 port, one optical audio port, and a micro SD card reader. On the opposite side, you have ventilation holes. To the front, you have an IR sensor, and below the box, you have an anti-skid rubber pad, a reset button, and no ventilation holes. So the box starts with the Yugo's animation for a few seconds. Then you have the pairing of the Bluetooth voice remote. Once completed, you are given the option to select between two launchers. Launcher 3, which is suited for users who like to use mouse pointers to navigate, and you have the Yugus launcher that's more suited to navigating with a direction pad and OK button. Once you have selected your preferred launcher, you can also select to set it to your default launcher upon every restart. So Launcher 3, which is my preferred launcher, delivers features such as long click menu pop-ups and drag and drop shortcuts similar to mobile phones. Also, you have a navigation bar with recent apps feature, and you have a full pull-down status slash notifications bar with system controls. So if I head over to the settings area, it shows that this firmware was compiled using the Android 11 SDK and here is its firmware build information and you have access to developer options. Yugus's firmware usually has the most features in the industry, starting with a maximum resolution of up to 4K 2160p at 60Hz. And this is true 60Hz up to 12-bit, as that is what's detected by my PC's capture card. You have a user interface lock-in feature that you can disable to display the launcher in true 4K resolution. It has HDR display with the option to set it to Adaptive HDR, so this makes it compatible with both HDR and non-HDR TVs and only activates when HDR videos are played. You have color mode settings up to 12-bit. You have built-in screen rotation to portrait mode, reverse landscape, and reverse portrait. You also have in this section the much appreciated feature of forced landscape which prevents apps from cropping into a mobile frame when being used. And you have automatic frame rate switching. Under sound settings, you have options to enable sound over HDMI and sound over its optical audio port. And under advanced sound settings, you have your surround sound audio options. Under Input and Devices, you have Advanced HDMI CC options, a button mapping software for external remotes and gamepads, a new menu button feature where you can customize single press, double press, triple press, and long press to perform a wide range of functions on the box. You have Advanced Mouse Pointer options, 
and the USB port options. Under Panels and Interface, you have options to control the navigation bar and status bar. You have the option to change the style of the recent apps feature on the navigation bar to horizontal with perspective. You have hardware monitor feature for displaying component status across the status bar. You have voice search application options using either Google or Usearch. And they have now provided the option to change the speed of the interface under the animation options. This can make the launcher respond at lightning speeds if you are that kind of power user. Under power options, you have the option to change the behavior of the power LED indicator, which is one of the features I really like. Also in this section, you have some energy saver options and to the bottom, you have another feature that I like very much, which is the ability to max out the CPU scaling governor to performance mode without using a kernel auditing software. This greatly improves its gaming performance and benchmarks. By default. When you press and hold the power button on the remote, you get power key definition options, sleep timer, setting shortcut and screenshot options. Under super user, you have a root switch by way of the Magix application, which I will demonstrate in a moment. You have Google search options. Under storage is where you'll find your client and Samba server feature. And finally, you have advanced settings, which gives you access to Android's core settings area. So that, my friends, is the most features recorded to date from an Android TV Box firmware. The only other model recently that has the same amount of features is the TOX3, and that is simply because they are made by the same manufacturer. For pre-installed apps, they included the official version of Miracast along with the AirScreen app, and the Miracast app works, as I will show you in a moment. You have a Yugo's mobile remote control app where you can use your cell phone as a remote to navigate a box. You have full Google Play services and a pair of file browsers. So let's now take a look at its system and hardware information. So the manufacturer of this box is Yugo's and this is the pro model so it comes with 4GB of LPDDR4X RAM, 32GB of internal storage and its Bluetooth version is 5.1. Its CPU is the Amlogic S905X4, a quad-core Cortex A55 CPU configured in 32-bit mode with a maximum CPU clock speed of 2.0 GHz. Its display is powered by the Mali G31 GPU with OpenGL version 3.2 which is great for gaming. It has dual band 2.4 GHz plus 5 GHz Wi-Fi AC network adapter. Operating system is Android 11 and is currently not rooted but it does have a root switch. Its GPU has Vulkan API version 1.1 support which is another good feature for gaming. Its idle operating temperature is around 49 degrees Celsius which is pretty low for its CPU that's clocked at 2.0 GHz. It comes with all the decoders for the playback of 4K HDR videos, AV1 and Dolby Vision videos. And it has surround sound audio decoders such as Dolby Atmos EAC3 and the DTS HD. So that's its system and hardware information. For users of paid subscription services such as Netflix, Amazon Prime Video, Disney+, HBO Max, Sling TV and others, the DRM information shows that it has Google Wide Vine Level 1 with HDCP 2.3 protection. I was pretty excited to see this level of certification on a device running the mobile version of Android which would mean that you could run these subscription services in HD and 4K with the exception of Netflix that needs a special separate ESN certification. However, after extensive testing, I could only get up to 720p resolution on Amazon Prime Video and on the modified version of Netflix. Apparently, there is still an issue restricting the use of HD 1080p and 4K with these services. As for root access, out of the box it comes not rooted. This does not affect the streaming of movies and TV shows. But if you use apps such as gamepad, key mapping apps and other specialized apps that require root access, then you would have to use the root switch by installing the Magix application. To do this, simply head over to the settings area on the device preferences and open the super user section and enable the Magix switch. The box will automatically restart and upon restart it will install the Magix application. 
Then in the settings area, click on the Magix app to update to the latest version. And once the update is completed, you will have root access. For watching YouTube videos, you can install the version directly from the Play Store and watch videos in 4K 2160p resolution with HDR. For casting your mobile devices, it comes with the official version of Miracast that can cast your mobile devices in HD quality. Here I'm casting my Android cell phone without issues. Moving on to its customization features, I already showed that it has built-in screen rotation to portrait mode and for those who were wondering what's the use of this feature, there are some users who use vertical displays for work, entertainment, advertising and it works great for platforms such as Instagram and TikTok that uses a cell phone display layout. And with this feature, you can rotate your screen to 90 degrees to fit these displays or flip it to work with projectors. For alternative launchers, you already have the best launcher installed which is Launcher 3, which gives you long click mini pop-ups, drag and drop shortcuts and custom wallpapers. However, you do have the option to install any alternative launcher you want and it will work without issues. Here I installed the Nova launcher in addition to what's already included with this firmware. You can also use custom images as your wallpaper or you can install live wallpapers. So I'll now test its 4K HDR video playback capabilities and I'll be using its hardware monitor overlay to monitor for adaptive HDR switching and display resolution. A win for Barca would be enough because it would give them the same number of points as Atletico, but the head to head goal difference. so the box can handle 4K HDR videos without issues. And I'll now test for surround sound audio formats. And here I have it connected to my 7.1 audio receiver in HDMI pass-through configuration. First, it plays Dolby Atmos. Prepare to experience something spectacular with the sight and sound. And you also get a Dolby True HD.
Next, I can play Dolby Digital Plus. Powerful moving audio that transcends from channels. You get DTS HD Master Audio. Dolby Surround. DTS-X and Dolby Digital. So this means this box can play every surround sound audio format there is to offer. But please note, this is only achieved using version 21 of the Kodi Media Player. So to test its graphics rendering performance, heat levels during gaming and a gamepad came up in capability, I will play some Android games with the CPU speed, temperature and RAM usage displayed using the hardware monitor window. This is FIFA Mobile World Cup Edition and I'm using the Panda Gamepad Pro key mapping application. Can he finish? And a goal to delight the fans! Just what they were hoping for! Well, as you can see, he's a great talent. What a run, what a goal. Here I'm playing PUBG using the Panda Mouse Pro key mapping application and as I continue to monitor its temperature, it peaks at around 72 degrees Celsius. This is Shadowgun Legends and this game is gamepad ready. The game is a bit more graphics intensive, so the temperature rose to around 78 degrees on medium to low graphics settings. For alternative operating systems, you can now install Coalec and Emulec since the release of the Amlogic S905X4 DTB or device tree on their website. For this box, you can use the SC2 S905X4 Yugus X4 DTB for it to work. You can also install the latest version of Emulec and enjoy the best of retro gaming. The DTP for Emulec is the same as for Coalec, just copy the DTP to the main folder and rename it to DTP.img. And to close things off, let's take a look at its benchmarks and where it places on my rankings chart. First, we have its RAM copy speed and its internal storage read and write speeds. Its RAM copy speed is 3507 megabytes per second. Its internal storage has a read speed of 171 megabytes per second and a write speed of 103 megabytes per second. Next is its Wi Fi bands and Ethernet LAN speed test. Its 5 GHz band, along with the LAN port, which is a gigabit LAN port, achieved the maximum speed of my network of 154 megabits per second, and this should be your choice for maximum speed. The 2.4 GHz band, however, does work, but it's restricted to only 17% of my network speed. Next is its single core and multi core CPU benchmark. In the Geekbench 5, the CPU benchmark had scored 155 single core and 537 multi core. In benchmarking its GPU, in the 3 Mark Gamers benchmark, it qualified only for the Wild Life Test with Vulkan support and it scored 189. And in the Antuto benchmark, it scored 108,314. And that's the last of the benchmarks, let's now see where it places on my rankings chart. So I've entered the scores on my rankings chart and the new Yugus X4Q Pro is at position 23 based on its Antutu benchmark and it also received a 5 star rating and a trophy for providing Google Wide Vinyl Level 1 on the mobile version while at the same time delivering the most features to date. 
you can view this chart on my blog where you can compare the rest of its benchmarks and I also provided a price comparison on coupon page using this link right here. The link can be found in the description directly below this video. In summary, the X4Q Pro is definitely the best medium range TV box for 2022 and it topped the TOX3 with more features, performance and Google certification on the mobile version. The only issue I have with this box is that it does not have a Netflix ESN certification. So if you are looking for my recommendation on which is the best TV box to purchase within the medium range price bracket, then I highly recommend that you look no further as Yugos is the best in the industry. At the point of making this video, it's only available on AliExpress at the lowest prices and it will soon be available on other retail stores and Amazon. So if you would like the lowest prices, see the link in the description below this video. So I've come to the end of this review. Special thanks to Yugos for sending their latest model. If you would like to support this channel and the Yugos brand, give this video the thumbs up, I would really appreciate your gesture. If you are just checking out one of my videos for the first time and enjoyed the content provided, then be sure to click that subscribe button and ring that notifications bell before leaving to receive notifications each time I release new TV box videos or decide to do a giveaway. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.